Uh, Hunter, you're on with Jen and Matt. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Not too bad. You've been on hold for like an hour, and I figured that made your call pretty important. So how can we help? I, I have been on hold. Thank you so much. Um, I've been watching the show for a while, but I'll just jump to it. I know there's a lot of people on the line. Um, so I'm Hunter. I'm 22. I um, currently live in Ohio, but I just moved up here from Texas. Um, so I grew up Southern Baptist, non-denominational, so like contemporary worship music, all that stuff. Grew up in the church. I was on the worship team. I played bass um, at a pretty big mega church. Um, I was a youth pastor, like a youth leader, you know, within the youth program, very involved in the church. And I graduated, went to a private Christian college for four years, graduated. And I just recently moved to Ohio to start working full time, like as an adult, like in the real world. And when I moved up here, I was looking for churches and I like had this feeling like I didn't want to go anymore. I was like, that's, that's kind of weird. And then, you know, as more time went on where I wasn't, you know, near home, I'm like across the country, somewhere new, I have no friends or family you know, I'm out of my community and I just started to like not care anymore. And I thought that was really weird. And, um, I've kind of, just, you know, after these six months, I've been watching, you know, your guys' show and other views of thoughts, you know, um, just on YouTube and just other speakers. And I've come to like, I think realize that like, man, maybe I don't, didn't believe any of that, or I don't know. And the biggest thing I want to ask you guys is, is that my family is super religious. My mom and my stepdad are you know, super ingrained in it. And I am scared to have the conversation with them to even start it because I'm scared of the repercussions of what might happen if I come out as an atheist. I'm a little, I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole of like, I, I'm pretty much sure that I am, I guess, more atheist than Christian, but I'm scared to even cross that line and come out as atheist because if I do, the repercussions might be harmful to me. Do you think that you need to? Talk to them about it. I think I, I think I do need to. Um, I just, my biggest thing is, you know, me and my mom are super close, you know, single mom. And, you know, we've gone through a lot together and, you know, like the church has been really good to us. I've had a great experience with it. And my mom is super religious. We pray every meal, you know, and like, it's been all good stuff. And, you know, she grew up super religious and like her relationship with God is like her biggest thing. And, you know, this might sound like a weird thing, but like it makes her like super proud and happy that her son was a good Christian boy and went to a Christian college. And like, I'm like her mini Tim Tebow, if that makes sense. And that gives oh, her it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Passion. It gives her so much joy and passion to know that. And if I were to come out and like say, Hey mom, I'm not that anymore. I, I'm scared. Like I care about my mom and love her enough for like, I'm scared that I might crush her. If I do come out as you a might, kid. I crushed my mom. I crushed mine. Hmm. Oh my. Okay. That's why I wanted to ask you guys is your, your experiences and what that, how it turned out for you guys. Uh, bad, but not the worst thing ever. And they know who I am and I'm much happier, uh, having people in my life who know who I actually am as opposed to who I might be pretending to be. Now, what you, where you fall in that decision is, is entirely up to you. I can tell you that, uh, Greta Christina wrote a book, um, about coming out as an atheist and interviewed, I think like 400 people. And of the people she interviewed, only one genuinely regretted coming out. Many of them had bad experiences and, you know, rough periods like, oh, you know, for the first year, everything was a disaster. We couldn't have good conversations. Um, but it was a good book where different people talked about what happened to them coming out, what, what was good about it, what was bad about it. Uh, reading something like that and, you know, engaging with other people uh, either through recovering from religion or the discord, uh, or, or something like that, just to get feedback from other people. But your interaction is going to be different from everybody else. You, your relationship with your family is going to be different from my relationship with mine. And it's all going to come down to, you know, are you comfortable lying seemingly forever? Right. And I think that's the crossroad I have been at. And to be honest, I've been watching a lot of your show and just other, other like atheist speakers to like prepare myself with all the bombardment of questions and, you know, backlash I'm going to get. And I need to be able to truly, I guess, understand my own argument. And so the show and other speakers have been, you know, again, I greatly appreciate all that you guys do because I you know for like the last six months, I did every, you know, at night I lay in bed and just scroll through the the, the VODs of the YouTube channel and just watch all the videos I can. Um, and so, wow. So to hear that you guys had negative experiences, I guess was like, 
I, I guess is the answer I was expecting to hear, but I guess it's just, I guess I'm scared of conflict. You know, me and my mom have had a great relationship our entire life and we've never really had a big bump in the road, I guess. And so for me to come back, yeah, I don't want to lie. I'm, I'm too young. I'm 22. I don't, I don't think I want to lie the rest of my life. And I don't think that's healthy. And I think coming out would have to be the, the correct answer. Uh, can I tell you what I regret about the way that I came out? Absolutely, please. Um, I regret that I made it like some kind of big announcement. I, I made a big post on Facebook. I used a meme that was really sarcastic and it said something about, you know, they told me to use my brain to find God and ironically I became an atheist or something like that. And I made it a big thing and I, I just kind of slapped it in everybody's face because I didn't feel like having the conversation a hundred times because I have so many family members. Um, I regret the way I did that. Um, because I don't, I don't think, I, I think the fact that I made it a big thing scared them and they didn't know how to interpret that. And so what I wish that I had done was just wait and just live my life. And then as it comes up naturally, then just be honest as they speak about things, ask questions that, you know, when I'm uncomfortable or excuse myself. Um, but I, I don't think you have to lie but I also don't think you have to make it like a big announcement. You don't have to come out with it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think, you know, and there've been some moments where I feel like I could have the conversations, but you know, as much as I love my mom, she's not a critical thinker, I guess as I am. Um, and you know, there's a big, I bet you both know of it, the Ken Ham versus uh, Bill Nye, the creationist museum debate that was like an hour and a half long. And you know, yeah. that was like my first introduction to like, maybe this, whoa, like, no, it's ark. Like if it, if it's in the Bible and this is real, you know, and that's you know went down the rabbit hole of that. And I brought it up to her one day, and, she, and her first remark was, it, "Why does it matter? Not let's critically think about it. It's like it doesn't matter. I have a personal experience of God." And then of course, yeah. you know, you can go down that rabbit hole. And so your mom is, you know, your mom is very much like my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom uh, has largely been homebound for most of the last fifty years. Um, has listens to various preachers, does lots of Bible studies and knows absolutely nothing about the old Testament and doesn't care to. And anytime anything about the old Testament even comes up, it's just doesn't matter. She's got, you know, her personal relationship with Jesus. And so it doesn't matter what that says. The only thing that matters is what she's getting directly. She feels from the Holy spirit and her daily Bible studies or, or whatever this, you know, particular preacher she might be listening to has to say, um, you can avoid the a word. You can avoid making a big deal out of it. You can just gradually be more and more honest about who you are. And when they ask questions, say, yeah, I don't know if I believe that. I'm, I'm you know, uh, I'm reevaluating some of my beliefs and other stuff. Uh, I'm not sure where I'll end up, but yeah, maybe I don't even believe in God. I don't, I'm not completely sure. And, and, and all of that is largely honest for everybody and yet makes it so that you don't do, well, you don't do what Jenna did and you don't do what I did which is when my uncle basically called me and said, you're going to tell your father or I will. I was like, okay, fine. So I, I call my dad and tell him. And then my dad just decides to go off and listen to, you know, not talk to me, but he, instead they engage with like Lee Strobel and others uh, to say, what should we do about our fully grown 30 something atheist child? Uh, and none of them had the temerity to, to just say, why don't you talk to them since they're a fucking adult, you know, and maybe you shouldn't be right. infantilizing your, you know, your, your, your grown children. Um, the big thing is, is it your family needs to know that while you may have changed your views on things, including about whether or not there's a God that's separate from your views about them, that you still care about them. You're not doing this to hurt them. It's not a phase. You've just, you know, sincerely evaluated things and come out in a different place and that you're open to having your mind changed, but not by bad reasons. And it's something that's going to take quite a bit of time. And you pretty much have to give them, I, I tend to go with like Dan Savage's thing. If you come out like, you know, gay or LGBTQ, uh, you give everybody a year just to be shitty and get used to it because you're the one in the relationship that has changed. That doesn't make it your fault, but it does make it your responsibility. And so you got to be prepared for some really bad reactions because these people are going to be terrified. Um, they, they may, they, you, the, your mom is so proud because you're her best spiritual accomplishment. She raised a good God fearing son. Who's going to go to heaven is going to be sharing the truth of Jesus and the Holy spirit with the world. And now you're getting ready to tell her, yeah, that shit ain't happening. And that's not going to go over well. 
Can I make uh, two yeah. recommendations really quickly? Oh. Is is uh, to, have you heard of street epistemology? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I've been watching. You know, Matt has mentioned it a couple of times, so I went down watching some more. So ab absolutely, I know a lot about it. Awesome. And then Matt also recommends a lot recovering from religion. Have you found that one as well? I, I have not. No. That's a nonprofit that people volunteer to basically people like you and me who have come to this side and understand what it's like to be kind of freaked out and lost. Those kind of people are on the other end and they can be there to talk to you. They're not therapists, um, but they're peers that can relate to you and help you. Although the recovering from religion um, organization is also tied to the secular therapist project. And, and yes. one reason to encourage people like you, Hunter, to get involved is initially you'll have access to people who have spent some time studying how best to talk to people in your situation and to point you to resources of other people who've been in your situation. But as you move forward and as your situation changes, you may very be, very well be one of the people who becomes a volunteer for recovering from religion to help other people who are in the situation that you're in now. No, yeah, that sounds... That sounds awesome. I appreciate it. Jenna. Thank you for the recommendation and Matt as well. Yeah, I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of, cause I've just kind of been this weird. I don't have a lot of secular friends. You know, I just moved to Ohio COVID. I've been locked in my apartment doing my job and all my friends yep. are BS. And it's, you know, I, I watch the show as much as I can to like get some, I guess, comfort and some wisdom, but this has been super helpful. I, I genuinely appreciate both Great. of you. Awesome. We're very glad that, that you were helpful. I'm gonna let you go Hunter and we're going to move on to some other callers, but, you know, don't feel free. Don't, don't feel, um, or, or please reach out to us when something changes and, you, and you've got some kind of update or further questions, but thank you. Absolutely. Matt and Jenna, thank you guys for a great rest of the day. Thanks. You too. It's a, uh, it's a common question. It's one we get a lot. Um, and ultimately it's up to each individual to figure out who they want, who they're going to be and how they're going to be out and what their family situation is. Um, I've heard horror stories of, you know, particularly of younger people just being disowned and, and kicked out. But I've also heard some incredibly uh, inspiring stories where just the mere ability and capacity for you as an individual to be out and open about the fact that you're not religious, that you don't believe these supernatural claims, um, is enough to make some other people within the family who have been having doubts and having concerns and being terrified to say anything, it can, it can embolden them to reach out. Now I can say this in my, my immediate family or my, I guess my, my, my close family is huge. Like my mom has, there, there were, there were four children in that family, same thing on my dad's. And then there's uncles and aunts and kids. I mean, we would, we would have Euchre tournaments at somebody's house with 50 people and there was nobody there who wasn't family. I mean, in, in Christmas was a, a big deal. Um, and so much so that we do it multiple times. It'd be Christmas Eve here, Christmas Day here, then Christmas Day evening here. Um, of that extended family of, let's say, 60, more than half a dozen of them have privately reached out to let me know that they share my views largely or they do not share the religious views of other portions of the family, et cetera. Um, and others are have been just nothing but loving, saying, hey, uh, I don't agree with you, but I'm not going to hold it against you. And there were rifts in our family where there were people who I, I, was, I thought and had been led to believe did not want to interact with me at all. Um, and so in, in the interest of largely keeping the peace and not wanting the conflict, I didn't hang out with those family members. And last year or a couple of years ago after a funeral, um, I sat down with one of my aunts and found out that's not the case at all. And so there's many, many years of, of lost relationships up that was all because somebody else decided to speak on behalf of other members of the family. And, and by all means, if you care about people, talk to them. Don't get it secondhand. Well, and that's the sad thing is that you are go probably going to lose relationships. Um, but what I do is I just try to make sure that I'm not the reason that those relationships end, that I don't give them what I consider a logical reason to end the relationship. It's like, for example, I had a really good friendship with somebody in my family and they said that we can't talk because we have nothing to talk about anymore. Like, well, I mean, if you really feel like that, well then I guess we don't, you that's know? So sad. That's, that's extra sad because um, 
like the last couple of times that Jenna and I have hung out, I don't think we've talked about God or religion at all. <laughs> it's about other things that are going in our on in our life. And so when somebody's like, oh, well, I can't talk to you because we now we have nothing to talk about. I'm like, are you not alive? Are you not living, in, you know, sharing a country and oxygen with me? Is, is, there, right. is there nothing else? Not, not even sports or the weather, the, the little pedestrian things. No, no, nothing. Fine. In that case, I'd much rather have Jenna in my life because we don't seem to have too much difficulty finding shit to talk about. Yeah, it's sad.